Hey, Ajay, how are you? Very well, thank you. Hi, Kirti. Welcome <coughs> to my podcast. I'm very happy to have you on. I've been working towards getting someone who understands more about productivity, stress awareness, and mental men's mental health. And I thought about you. So thank you for coming. How thank are you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah, looking forward to it. So if I have to ask you to share men's mental health, is that something that is worth talking about? What do you think? We can talk about it because it's one of the most hidden thing you will ever come across. The Man, most? Hidden thing. Hidden. Nobody talks about it because uh, it's been proven and mm -hmm. there have been many studies that have found that men are 50% less likely to share their struggles with others compared to women. Run, that, run that statistic by me again. It, okay. It has been researched mm -hmm. that men are 50% less likely to share their struggles with others compared to women. I wanted to hear and make sure I heard that correctly. 50% is a high number. Yeah. They're 50% less likely. So if let's say a girl goes and tells you 10 things, which are like struggles in her life, mm -hmm. oh, I will come and tell you only five of those. It's like that. Why? Why? Because of the social stigma, because of the expectation from men that society has put, because men are the problem solvers because boys don't cry because everybody wants to be a man. Those are the some, you know, very high level reasons to why men don't share. And as a result, if you look into the suicide data, mm -hmm. when men try to commit suicide, they are three times more likely to die compared to women. So what it says is that when mm -hmm. they try it, they try it to make it happen. Right. So, the situation gets so worse for them because they don't share. They just keep everything in themselves and always showing you that happy face. Mm -hmm. But when they erupt inside, it is like only one way. So very sad statistics to start the interview, but yeah. There no, is. I mean, it's, it's great to start this interview because I did not expect you to tell me 50%. That's one. And then you're telling me that when they, when, somebody's determined to commit the end of their life, they will make sure. And that is a, it's a very alarming determination to have. I do see men on the male gender online promoting mental health, but if all that mental health is being promoted, still 50% is a high number. Why with all that is being done about it, why is it not reducing that number changing somebody's mindset is a really long process the social norms that for example everybody wants to go and do studies and you will be surprised the education that we currently have like going to a engin an engineering degree or something like that is very new but it is around a hundred year years old it's a comparatively new in the human evolution but now that has taken 100 years to establish, mm -hmm. even though right now the needs of uh, engineers or, you know, the kind of things that industrial age needed, that the age needed, those kind of skills mm -hmm. may not be needed now, but the education is not moving with the pace the science is moving. Why? Because... It has been understood by everybody that this is the right way to do their studies. This is the right way. Just do your 10 plus 2 study and then go to college and study maths. Everybody studies maths. Everybody studies physics and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on when you will need, need those skills. And you would see millions of videos on internet, on YouTube, saying so much of negative stuff about education system. You know, I never used the trigonometry that I studied and things like that. And I mean, I do not agree with all of them, mm -hmm. but I know where they're coming from. What they are saying is that... Stand on that. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why do people say that? Is that, okay, if I can make millions of dollars just by creating an Instagram reel, why should I go and study, right? The teenagers are talking like this. Okay. Why should I take a degree when I can just make TikTok and, and that's it. I can make more money than a 50-year-old executive. Yeah. 
right? So they are thinking in those directions. And what they're trying is they're trying to challenge the system. And it is very hard to challenge the system because it has taken a long time to put that mindset in people's head that you need education in order to do something in your life. Now, a similar thing, I'm just linking it with the man's mental health to why is it like they don't share and stuff like that is because for more than thousands of years, men have been like breadwinner, uh, the, the wall of the family, everybody relies on them and they have lived like that. And they have to live up to the expectations of not just the family, but the society. If, if a man is crying in, the, in a family, it would be seen as weak. Mm-hmm. If the man is sharing vulnerability, they'll be like, uh, uh, he's not man enough. Right. So, so, so men want to be that hard rock, you know, you can't, you can't squeeze my struggles out of me, that kind of attitude. And that is a mindset problem. And that to change that will take a really long time. So that's a reason I guess is why men still, despite the fact that there mm-hmm. have been so much of uh, new books or whatever research is coming up, it's not changing anytime soon. I'm sorry. Let me ask you about you from it, from your personal perspective, if that's okay, right? How did you, how do you navigate your own personal, you with all the knowledge that you have, how do you manage or navigate your own mental health with the stress, knowing what you know? I think whatever I have, I mean, it's just not about man's mental health. It is anybody's mental health, really. Mm -hmm. The first and foremost thing that everybody should be worried about is their physical health, Mm -hmm. right? Everything starts from there. Mm -hmm. And if you are not taking care of your body, because what is mental health? It's some neural connections in your brain. Mm -hmm. It is it is the amount of some memories and what are memories? Memories are nothing but the connection between the two cells, Mm -hmm. right? That's it. It's very physical thing. And if your brain is not in good health, if you have so much of, I don't know, the bad memories of the past and you're just thinking about, about them, ruminating Mm -hmm. about them and can't do anything about it, that will put your whole body into a state of uh, so much less energy, so much less enthusiasm to do things. So I think, First and foremost, everybody should take care of their body, right? Mm -hmm. And learn about it. Learn about how to take care of your body because majority of people don't really know what what is their body. What does it mean for you? Well, to eat nice, eat good food, eat nutrition that are needed to keep your brain healthy and Mm -hmm. know about them. Nobody's going to come and tell you. Just, I mean, there is so much of research available. Now you should know that, Avocados are good for your health and blueberries are good for your brain. The walnuts are good for them. These are like very basic things. You can go and find it out, but you have to, first of all, know it and then do it. Like eat that kind of food. Do not binge on sugar and Coke and things like that. So, I mean, there's a very basic thing. I'm not, I'm not a health expert, but I've just learned from the research that has been done. And there have been so many, um, I tell you, there is a... Uh, can't find the well this book here right so this is the book the depression cure okay and i read it a uh, long time ago it says six step program to beat depression without drugs mm-hmm. okay and it's been like around seven years ago i read it and i still remember there are a few things that are told in this book do you One apply them? them oh one of them is i have been using it for so long is about the fish oil Right. Okay. Again, this is not a health a health podcast. And no, no, no. You're sharing your. I, I want to hear your experience. But, but a lot of people will go to Holland and Barrett and uh, Amazon and get fish capsules. Mm-hmm. Right. They think that oh, it's good. It's good for your heart. It's good for your overall um, nervous system and maybe for your brain also. But not many people know that fish oil could be not that beneficial also because you can get it very cheap like four pounds five pounds in holland barrett and get like 120 of those pills yeah it's so cheap what is going going on here some fish capsules are five pounds some are 50 pounds what's Mm -hmm. the difference right and what i learned from this book there are three three main um fish oil capsule has three main components uh, Mm -hmm. if you want to call it one is epa one is dha and one is ala yeah so ala being the cheapest and mm-hmm. EPA being the most expensive because if your supplement has a lot of EPA, mm-hmm. 
and some DHA and a very little ALA, it's going to be very expensive. You can check on Amazon when you go to the bottle, try to read how much of EPA in that. And EPA is actually very beneficial for your brain in terms of your keeping your mood up. Mm-hmm. And that's what I learned from this book. <laughs> and I've seen that it, it works and it's amazing. It's really amazing. There are only a couple of brands who make it. Uh, and yeah. So, so you use fish oil, but I have to go back to one thing. Um, cause I've, pra- I've, I used to, um, I, well, I still do in that way. I teach yoga from a very Eastern perspective. And I say Eastern perspective because the West is very focused on their physical attributes, on their physical body. But I noticed that, and when I was teaching also, with all that physicality, technically, with all the data that there is there, technically the number of anxiety should go down or depression should go down, right? So there is, when there's too much focus on one place in yoga, they say you've got to have a holistic view of everything. So your physical, your emotions and your mind, right? So when you're going back to the, the physical part of like, okay, you got to have the fish oil, but when those memories are still there, you still got to work on those memories. And if men, I mean, I know a lot of male gender, I even knew two male genders who have every day taking care of their bodies, eating the right thing, having the right knowledge, everything. But at 45, ended up passing away. And the reason, again, it goes back to the whole idea of not being able to manage the stress. So is it physical first or doesn't it have to go hand in hand? Because there's not, again, it's not so much spoken about, about the mental side of stuff, I feel. Okay, the reason I said physical first is that you you should be able to sit if you want to do meditation. Right? Yeah, of course. And and I love meditation. Mm-hmm. And I, I have tried plenty of different types of meditation to find out which one works for me. Mm-hmm. And that experience in understanding what it is, what is happening in your brain, because there is biological things happening, the physical things are happening when you're doing meditation. You are literally going into the the, the theta and alpha brainwave state, yeah. which otherwise when you're stressed, you're always in high beta or gamma, mm-hmm. right? So these are your brain waves. And when you're in delta, you're sleeping, which is very, um, it's kind of uh, waves like this, right? So the gamma is, and that's happening when you're doing something intense, like you are playing a football match or something that re- needs real focus from you, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's when you're like this. Mm-hmm. And beta is like you and me talking right now, right? So which is a little bit relaxed. And then you go back in alpha, which is when you are meditating. So your brain goes very quiet. Mm-hmm. You further go down. What they call the gaps. Theta, and then you go to theta, which is when every night when you sleep, you go in theta every, every single day, twice, twice a day you do that. And then you go into delta, which is your sleep. So all these cycles are happening in your brain, which is the physical thing, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to, a lot of people will come and tell you, and I, the meditation doesn't work for me. It's like, why? Because when I close my eyes, everything comes in front of me. <laughs> I yeah, can't I know. I, I you can't, get it a lot. Yes, exactly. I can't keep my brain calm. Right. So why I said physical first is because you should be, your body should be able to support it to some extent. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Power of habit. Mm-hmm. If you start doing it, it will work. And I made a, a, a clip a long time ago about it. You know why meditation doesn't work for people. Mm-hmm. Well, and the reason is that they judge it, that it's not working. It's not, it's not, uh, it's like gym. You go to the gym on day one, you don't get the muscles, right? You don't get a six pack on day one. You have to go there for six months every single day or whatever, like three times a week or whatever, right? So what, yeah. yeah. So what so will you, get the habit, what will get, before I lose that train here, yeah. what will make, get men into the habit of talking calmly or more um, practically about their mental health and emotions? To prevent the numbers, to, to make those numbers go down, to make that 50% go down. I think your, your, your circle plays a crucial role in that. The kind of people you surround yourself with. Because if you got a right environment, you will mm-hmm. start to open up slowly. 
And you just cannot go out and say, you know, there's a lot of shit going in my life to every Tom, Dick and Harry, right? Yeah. And you can't even talk to your your office colleagues. You might think, oh, you know, what will they think? What will it have any impact on my on my job? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. So first of all, you have to have a good company. If you don't have, find one. So there are so many uh, groups who who are promoting, encouraging man to open up and talk mm -hmm. about their struggles because it's not every single person here has something going in your head men or women doesn't matter right so when you open up and when you share and you realize oh the other person is also in the same boat and then you feel so much better right and this will happen only when you when you have a supportive environment around you so to to build that habit actually we drifted from the meditation as a habit versus sharing your stuff as yeah. a habit everything starts small. That's the one thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you because I'm thinking back on some clients that I used to have. Some could, they would be okay to go through the discomfort, initial discomfort you have in meditation, which is seeing everything because whatever you're really seeing is whatever you're constantly, you know, holding into your mind. Mm. So, but there are others who you got to support them. Indeed. Like you said, you know, you share them that, for them to understand their circle of environment, to come from, from that state of fastness, the panic state, you're calming the mind down so that when it does sit for the meditation, it is not like shutting it off, right? So when, you, when you're saying, okay, not everybody is going to speak about it. And I always hear so often about how women are emotional and men, men are not. And I think to myself, when I look at the amount of courses out there, everything is for women. There's so much for women, but then there's almost like crickets for men. I mean, what, so then what is the solution to that? You know what I mean? It's like crickets, just crickets. I know we speak a lot about everybody should do it. Great. But majority, if we break it down, majority, women do a lot on themselves and they're always trying to work up to this, to the old way that actually was built by a man. So how do you, how do we get the crickets in the male department, not to be so crickety, to be more open and engaging? I know you said men's circles, but is there anything else? I think awareness is important. And yeah. uh, again, everything goes back to your physical because these issues are related to your body, yeah. right? Mental health is actually, it sounds mental, but it is, it is your body. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a certain way your body is behaving. If something happens, how you react, mm -hmm. something nasty happens, you might go and start crying versus you would, you would just say, oh, fine, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So two different attitudes on how you react and respond. Don't react, respond rather, right. Think about it. So those kind of things do come to you when you have good enough awareness of it. How do you build that awareness within for for that for that gender? I think, uh, regardless of the gender, yeah, what helped me, I can tell you, okay, is uh, associating myself with the people who who understand me. That's one. Yeah. Second is gain knowledge as much as possible on that subject. So reading has massively helped. I mean, I have. Plenty of books on human brain, how the brain works, how the meditation uh, really helps people, what happens in, when you do meditate, because a lot of people, they will not believe. I've, I know so many people who have come here. I tried meditation. It's, it's just rubbish. It doesn't work. And they just give up very mm -hmm. early. Yeah, they right? do. And it's very difficult. I was uh, listening to somebody who said, it's very difficult for you to relish the fruit of something nice if you are so far away from it, let me give you an example. Mm. So if I tell somebody that, you know what, your weight is 120 kilograms, you should lose 50 kilograms of it, mm. right? For example, and the person will say, okay, then uh, what will change in my life when I'm 50 kilograms? And then somebody will say, you will be able to do much more things um, and I don't know, nicer clothes will fit you, look better, whatever, right? And if that person is so much into that being 120 zone, he loves watching Netflix on sofa 
And then when you say, you know, you will be able to go out and enjoy nature, etc. You probably will think, you know, what's the point in going out and enjoying the nature? I'm actually enjoying my Netflix show, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if losing weight is snatching that Netflix mm-hmm. fruit from me, why should I do that? The problem here is that that person is not able to see what, what it is like to be at that ideal weight. Mm-hmm. Just one example, right? It's, there are a lot of things that we say, what is liberation, right? <laughs> in, in, in all religious stuff, you say everybody wants liberation. What is liberation? Okay, mm-hmm. liberation is something that you don't have to worry about it, nothing, no relationships, and you're just perfect. And you're like, Why? You know, I like my, my, my snacks. I like my coffee. Why do I want to liberate? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've thought about it. Everybody talks about mukti, you know, liberation. The Gita talks a lot about it. Krishna you know, Murti, um, I like how he explains stuff. I really, really like it because he's very practical. And he reminds, and he was the first one that reminded me, liberation is about not getting too stuck on your outer world. You can have your outer world. Outer world is happening, but you're not really getting stuck to it, right? So I know you said sharing, I go back to this thing. You said one thing that helped you a lot was circle, having a really nice circle of friends. And then the second thing is like, how do you move the person away from that one that 120 thinking? So the idea of liberation would be to not get so stuck on that Netflix is what I gather, right? And when you there's something you do and I like how you really speak up so much about it is you're about the idea of productivity but you've redefined it in some ways I've seen you share it in so many ways where it is useful towards stress management how do you do that see if you keep your brain busy your brain will have less thing to think about okay right yeah and <clears throat> so productivity is it's a, it's a vast area, another vast area, but let's say how we can link that with uh, your overall mental health. I think one thing that has helped me at least is of keeping my mind so busy that I don't have time to think about uh, the rubbish stuff. Well, when you say busy, what does that, what is your definition of it? So keep, keep your, okay, so let's go to the biology again. Okay. Right? So every time you learn something, mm-hmm. There is a connection built in your brain Mm -hmm. between your neurons, right? Mm -hmm. Every memory is nothing but a physical connection or electromagnetic, whatever, like the brain waves, et cetera. Uh, um, I'm not a neuroscientist, but yeah, that's very high. Let's let's, let's say say it like this. Everything that you're learning is creating something in your brain. It's it's Mm -hmm. creating things. And if it is something new, then you're creating new neural pathways and they will help you think in a different way. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can learn a lot of things from anything. That's what I believe. And I did a, I did a, you can learn a lot of things from anything, from anything. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I did a workshop uh, about, there's a lot of people came in and uh, we don't know what to talk about. If they don't know what is, um, what should be their topic. I was like, well, there are millions of topics, you know, you can talk about anything. <laughs> you can talk about, uh, about this microphone. You can talk about the microphone for, for half an hour, for two hours, mm-hmm. or you can talk about the way people talk, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, so everything has so many different aspects. Okay. But in order to see those aspects, you need to have a different way of thinking. Okay. So that's right. your definition of busy then. So if you are keeping yourself busy and yeah. if you are learning new, new things, you're changing your perspective about the things that you already know. Okay. Your emotional state could be one of those. Okay. So let's say you started playing, going out, running or doing whatever. And then after running your, your say, for example, you go to shower, right? Okay. In shower, people get so many different ideas, new ideas. You yes, tons. Yeah. Tons of ideas. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. So it's a, it's a kind of exercise. I and mean, I, I still don't know why do people get ideas in shower, but you do. I do all the time when I'm in the shower. Okay, this, I, I actually had one great idea today <laughs> in shower. <laughs> like, so every time you get some new idea, which is hap- associated with a new activity, mm-hmm. right? So you might, so, and that will give you 
a new way of thinking. I don't know, I'm not able to really articulate it properly. But what I'm trying to say is that if you keep your mind busy and if you keep learning new things and implement those new things, they will not just take your focus from the the, the, the dark side of your brain. Mm-hmm. They'll take it to something new because we all want to create and creation gives you so much of satisfaction that all the pain that you had in the dark side of your brain will diminish slowly. Yeah. As in when you move into something more creative something creating something right so every time you 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 plant a seed mm-hmm. and when the when when it blooms and the flowers come you feel happy because you created something although it happened okay. naturally right yeah. but you became part of the process so and, it sounds, and, sounds to me is like you're talking about mastering you know people talk about masters but people think masters are like like some elevated but mastering is people who have mastered something so it sounds to me that what you're saying, the, your definition of busy is like you said, okay, this is dark, but if I master slowly the product productively out of it, I move towards not, you know, not being focused on it as negative, but then it has like a bloom or flower or have I got this wrong? So it's, it's not about mastering, uh, okay. to be honest. Being busy is about keeping your brain active. Really, that's pretty much it is, because if you keep thinking about something, if you're not, if you don't have anything to do, your Mm -hmm. brain will tend to think about what it has already in there. Right. But then that's also busy, right? Isn't it, Ajay? Yeah, but it's busy in the dark side. Yeah. So so busy, what I'm trying to get at is busy can also be like, I have friends who keep telling me I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, but their quality of life is struggling. They're really struggling to have a, a personal life because they say, I'm always busy with my work. So that's why I'm asking, I'm trying to really understand what, what you mean by busy. The reason I said being busy is yeah. to keep yourself active into something more fruitful. Okay, got rather, it. Th- rather than ruminating about your olden memories, yeah, which are already causing you so much of stress. Okay. Right? So, so for example, you you have some stressful moment happened, let's say a couple of some bereavement happened to somebody, for example, mm-hmm. right? Uh, of course, it's a reason to be sad. You can be sad, but you can just uh, bounce back in, in in a couple of days or maybe two days, three days, learning that it is it is it is what it is, right? It happens every with everybody. Everybody sees it. Yeah. Right? Everybody dies. It's up to you. Do you want to stay in that zone for? 12 days a month, because there are some people who don't come out of the bereavements for years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Versus some people who I've interviewed someone mm-hmm. who had a death and the next day they were at work. And you know about uh, some cricketers in India, you know, Sachin Tendulkar mm-hmm. and Virat Kohli, they had their, their father passed away and they were playing matches somewhere outside India and they continued playing and they finished it and then they came even though they kind of knew that this has happened. Mm -hmm. So it it, it depends on how quickly you want to bounce back from those memories. So what I'm saying is that being busy is to keep yourself uh, into the activities which are uh, helping you, (laughs) keeping your brain healthier rather than just pulling you down into that uh, downward spiral of of sadness and depression and um, yeah, those things. But Ajay, so I'm, you know, that 50% really took me by complete surprise. (laughs) And so I'm like, okay, but there's that thing, you know, sometimes we also use productivity as a way not to process our emotions, right? And so sometimes we say, okay, the best thing to do is keep busy. But then even I've noticed it through working with clients that after a while, that what they hadn't processed. So like in, they talk about the five stages of grief and that's like the processing of grief. But if you skip those, eventually you still come back to it. And so with the, the mental health from the male perspective where there's so much stigma around it, has it not always shown to have been avoiding it by staying productive? I I personally don't think there is uh, such a direct connection to these two things. Okay. Yeah, but uh, they are related. 
Okay. I, so they're not connected, but related. What does that, what that does means that look like? is, I mean, you cannot, you cannot improve your mental health just by being productive because you probably would not be able to be productive when your mental health is struggling. Yeah. You will struggle to be productive, right? Yeah. That's what people face. Mm -hmm. But how they're related is that if you, if your overall lifestyle is such that, that you're always keeping yourself busy and doing things and being productive, then your mind will be so much, uh, spongy, not spongy, so much, um, well, I like that word spongy though, because it makes it feel like it's, as long as yeah. it's not too dry or too, 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 like. You just take up, take up those kind of, you know, anything, uh, depressive that is coming yeah. up. And you can squeeze it out. Exactly. If your brain's health is better, which mm -hmm. being productive does, that's what I think. Right. So that's okay. how they're related. If your overall way of living is in certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's like if, if a car is running, I don't know, a hundred, hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And if it hits a bird, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't even realize. Yeah. Just the bird came and you, you didn't even see it. It just happened. Right. Versus if you are, let's say going very slow on a bicycle and, 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 and a pigeon comes in front of you, you will okay. probably fall. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a weird example just came well, in my I'm head. But... Ask it, can I ask you a personal, more personal question? How did you must have faced moments where emotions must have been very conflicting or high. We all, I would say, go through it at some point. How did you navigate it? Uh, as in instantly or, or at the long term? Applying, yeah. applying the way you're sharing it, how have you used that? And how has that looked like in the... So what has helped, I tell you, I mean, it's like first time I'm telling it in a public place. I used if to get angry. You're okay with it. So, long time ago, I used to get angry. And when I used to get angry, I used to harm something uh, which I have owned. For example, I'll throw my stuff, right? <laughs> break my phone or something like that. Right. And I realized that I'm, I'm kind of losing some stuff, you know, <laughs> financial thing losses. What has helped is meditation has helped massively mm -hmm. because the, the way I can absorb what is going around me has improved drastically. It's very difficult for someone to spike me now as of today. Yeah. It was probably easier 10 years back. And what has helped is to be in present and think, and it's very difficult to do it when somebody is just being nasty to you, you just want to react, mm -hmm. right? So although there there are some limits, like if somebody's slapping you, probably would slap them back or whatever. I don't believe in Gandhi's philosophy of, you know, give another cheek for another slap. But yeah. but let's not go to that side of it. But if somebody's saying something not nice to you, it's 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 dear problem because there is a book. I don't know if I have it. Um I actually have it. Oh, it's here. You can heal heal your life. Yeah, by Louise Hay. Yeah, so this Phenomenal is... Phenomenal book, yeah. Great book. And in this book, they say, hurt people, hurt people. Yes. So if somebody is uh, saying something really bad, there's something wrong with them. Rather than being angry on them, we should bless them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know you're not well, so <laughs> get well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that, then actually, in, in the moment, it helps. Yeah. But in the long run, it... And in the long run, not but, and in the long run, yeah. it, you will see that it has changed you overall. Because mm -hmm. the, the small things are not even bothering you anymore. Yeah. You're just chilled, monk. <laughs> the, the, the path of, um, I always think about the Buddhist lineage when they talk about the path of loving kindness. Mm. You meet, you meet your, what they call the demon, your inner demon, your inner monster, you meet it. But rather than just, um, you know, be aggressive with it. You invite it for tea as, as Buddha did for Mara, you know? Mm. So what it's in Louise Hayes' phrase always reminds me of that hurt people hurt people. And believe it or not, I had that same anger as you did. I used to just, you know, the rage is so intense that you didn't know how to park it all those years ago. So I can relate to that totally. And how long did you find that you, I mean, 
was it easy going for you to go for meditation or were you also resistant to it at first? Or were you, did your culture have anything to do with it? So I, I, I kind of knew about yoga as in like exercise yoga thing, right? Yeah. So the physical exercise, which is kind of very popular in this country. Yes. Um, also the meditation side, I experimented a lot. I would say I spent okay. around, we can say four or five years, even more to, to try different types of meditation. And <clears throat> now I've kind of understood the science behind it. What is mm -hmm. happening in your brain and yeah. why is it helping you? Why are you feeling better after meditation? So I've learned a lot about it by, by reading and watching stuff. And nowadays you have like so much of information available on YouTube or any on internet. Um, so that has helped. But it's a slow practice, slow process. Yes. It's sustainable, I call you, it. You want... If you're sitting for 10 minutes and you couldn't concentrate even for one second and you say that, oh, this shit isn't working for me, it's not for me, and you just give up, then you will never get it, All right? So maybe on day one, you you concentrate or you just don't think about anything for one second. <laughs> right? Next day, it might be two, and the day after, it might be three and four and five or whatever, right? So they, gradually, you will be able to control uh -huh. your brain. That's your style of productivity then. Because every day you do this little habit. It's a small little uh, changes, right? Yeah. It's the Atomic Habit, the book by James Clear. Yeah. Uh, and so it that's how you did your meditation? That's how I started because I couldn't do it myself. Like uh, if I'm sitting for 10 minutes, I will, mm -hmm. my brain will be everywhere. And uh, one thing to learn it easy is to understand your physique, understand your, your, your body, sorry, right? And how that can help is if you use hypnotism to get into meditative state, you mm -hmm. will so fast. And uh, in hypno when they hypnotize you, they will just tell you, you know, close your eyes uh, and focus on the stress that you're having on your forehead. And then you all of it, all of a sudden your focus goes into your forehead and you realize that you actually have some stress here. And then they say, release that. Mm -hmm. So you you're mindfully releasing that part of your body. And then yeah. they will go one step down, one inch down. They say, oh, look at your eyes, your eyelids. Are there, is there any stress on your eyelids? Just release it. And you release that. They release your cheeks, stress on your cheeks and da 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 da, da on your lips. And, you know, just uh, go look at your neck. Is there any stiffness in your neck? If you're feeling, just relax. So the hypnotism, when they do it, it feels like, oh, nonsense, just relax, relax, relax. <laughs> they say a hundred times relax in one, one exercise. But the end of the end of it, you realize that you have actually relaxed a lot, even though by the time you reached your feet, your mm -hmm. your head is again stressed like mm -hmm. it was before. But you still have, let's say, in, in your first sitting, you had 10 percent of relaxation. Yeah, right? they Some call it Shavasana in yoga. I don't know. So the next time when you do it, you will have more and more and more. So I think hypnotism helps because yeah. it it connects your your physical response uh, with your brain's thinking. Yeah, right. it's Shavasana. And have you heard of her? Oh, Shavasana. I know Shavasana. Shavasana yeah. yeah you, well, I sleep in Shavasana. So Shavasana <laughs> is like you lie down on the floor. <laughs> and that is a form of hypnotherapy because oh, yeah, yeah. it's the they, we always used to say. 20 minutes of Shavasan, lying mm -hmm. down on the floor and just going, you know, guiding yourself to, like you said, guiding mm -hmm. from the crown of your head all the way down. It gives you an equivalence. This is what they said, but it, there was no science back then. All these, you know, masters would say it's a, the equivalence of three hours of sleep. And you go, yeah, yeah, that's good. And then in Spain, they do a siesta. They do take the time to rest in, in between. I think the problem with Shavasan is that Majority of people, I mean, I've seen it in so many meditation yeah. retreats. And uh, after four minutes, you will start like people started snoring. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. It happens. Yes. It, it does happen. So so the 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 great place uh -huh. to be in the theta brainwave state if you can, theta okay. and alpha, you know, between alpha and theta. And those are the relaxed state of your mind, and that's where your brain is at the most creativity. It's I don't know, it was it um Alexander Graham Bell or Einstein or I don't know which person it was. Yeah. Different different sources tell you that Einstein did it or Graham Bell did it or whoever did it um, or Edison did it. Is that they had a ball in their hand and they sit on the chair and take a nap, right? And then they just keep the ball hanging in your hand. Okay. 
And the minute they lose control of the hand and the ball falls, yeah, they wake up and then they start thinking what is going on in their head because at that state they are in theta. Because otherwise you wouldn't realize when you're in theta. Interesting. Right? Okay. So you I'm come to theta right and you sleep. Right? That's what happens. Yeah. You when you're sleeping in the night every night, you can never tell me the exact time you fell asleep. Nobody can. Nobody can. You can I, only tell I went to bed at nine o'clock and then I slept. Uh, oh, how many times, how, ma- how many hours you were thinking or, you know, when did you exactly slept? Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Correct. So that, that in between state from um, beta to alpha and then theta and delta, yeah. in that state, Einstein or whoever it was, Edison, they create, uh, they wrote their notes. So mm-hmm. they were, when they are in that state, they know it because the ball dropped and made sound and that sound wake them up. And mm-hmm. that time they were in theta and alpha brainwave state. So they're just writing their notes and things like that. They did some creative stuff like that. So I'm so, going to try that. <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool tip. <laughs> so the, the, because the challenge is once you are in theta, you mm-hmm. will go in delta very quickly and you wouldn't even realize it and you will sleep. There are lots of things about it. There is something called um, lucid dreaming. I have a book on that yeah. also, and I don't know which shelf it is in, but um, <laughs> uh, lucid dreaming is about um, knowing in your dream that you're dreaming. Knowing in your dream that you're dreaming. Yes. I've and, heard di- that. And, and directing your dream. Yeah. yeah have so you been able to direct your dream? I've done that. I've, I, I've been able to do lucid dreaming. Really? Not every day, but I've, when I intentionally try it, I, I've mm-hmm. done it a few times. It's like, the, you know, that movie, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's movie where they have Inception. dreams. And, which one? Is it Inception? Inception, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that movie is kind of on the same concept, but it's a real it's concept. Dream. You can do it. Okay. You can, and you can have dream inside dream and then you can have a dream inside that dream. <laughs> 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 That's what that movie okay. is. It's, it's a really good book. Uh, it's a guy, I've, I've even met the, met the person who has written it. Um, he's a British well, guy. What we'll do is when you find it, I'd be happy to put it in the yeah. resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, we're hitting towards the end of the podcast. I'm, I'm, I learned so much. I feel like there's so much to cover when it comes to this. And I like, if I had to summarize what I took away from you, from conversation with you, and I always take this away from you, is that you make, you break it down. You, you do, you are to me still my productivity guru. I still think of it, but I like how you break it down. You know, those little steps, like putting the ball, um, the one second to the five second, changing that mental state of mind. Is there any place where more people can find information from you? Because I know maybe you, do you do any stuff besides this? So I do a lot of interviews. (laughs) Okay. I've not done in the last month, but I have some coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'm reading some books of those authors and most of the people I interview have written something, uh, especially books. Yeah. And whoever have been on my podcast, I've read their books and I have around uh, 90, 90 or 85 different interviews. And I think that's one resource and it's not always on the same topic, but they are related. So most of the interviews that I have are on personal development space, especially on productivity, public speaking and, and the neuroscience of your brain. Um, So I think it's a good, good source. It's not my wisdom per se, but it's my guest who is sharing what they have researched. So maybe I'm nudging you because it'd be really (laughs) great to have your system. (laughs) Yeah. So it's a good, good place to, to check out the kind of things that um, I'm learning really. But thank you, Ajay. I really enjoyed that you shared so much. You shared your personal side of it as well, which I appreciate. And I'm looking forward. I'm curious what the audience will think about it. Yeah, sure. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for having me, Kirti. Thanks a lot.